Hi, and welcome to this Greg's Bass Shed lesson. Today I want to talk about the incredible bass line that Duck Dunn plays in the Blues Brothers version of Sweet Home Chicago. So I'm assuming that you've seen the film and this particular scene where the song goes on for about seven or eight minutes. This is where all the great stuff's happening from the band, particularly from Duck Dunn, well for us bass players anyway. So I'm not going to teach you how to play Sweet Home Chicago, there's loads of videos out on YouTube that will teach you how to do that, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the really important parts and the musical devices that Duck Dunn uses in his bass line and show you how to use them in your own bass line. What I've done is I've transcribed some of Duck Dunn's bass line and I've put that down on a PDF, so that's in standard notation and tab, and you can get that PDF for free by clicking the link below in the description. Also make sure that you subscribe and click the notification bell. So I've written it all down and I'm going to go through that and pull out some of the really cool riffs and licks that Duck Dunn plays. As you probably know, Sweet Home Chicago is a 12 bar blues in E. Now it uses a quick change, which means it goes to chord four, which is A, in the second bar. So we've got a bar of E, a bar of A, and two bars of E. Then two bars of A, two bars of E, a bar of B, a bar of A, and then two bars of E. And we've got that turnaround in the last bar where it goes to B. So it's perfectly acceptable just to play a straight shuffle on the root notes, and it sounds really great. So, so that's the shuffle feel. Like that, and if you want to get just get used to finding out where the calls are, then just play that straight shuffle groove. Um, but what I want to show you is the really cool lines that Duck Dunn does. If you look at the PDF now on that first chorus, there's this groove. So we've still got these shuffle notes like we had with the roots. But what Duck Dunn is using there is a major pentatonic scale. Okay, it's not the usual shape because you've got the open E there, but if you had the pentatonic on the E on the A string, or, okay, so that down here, okay, so these notes, so they're just straight notes from the pentatonic, and then he does it on A, and then back to E, and then A. So the first two lines, you just need to know those two riffs for the E and the A. And when he gets to the B, the B7, he does this nice walking line. That's still the pentatonic. And you can slide up to that G sharp, and then slide up to the F sharp, and then back to the groove on E. And then we've got this turnaround. Or you can do it on the B here. So that's E, A, A sharp, B, B, C sharp, B. Okay, so that's the first chorus. So we've got this really nice groove. And then the second chorus, we kind of start with that groove, but then we just use more of the walking line. So, so we've got that walking line there on the second bar. And also uses a triplet. Okay, so what he's doing is he's he's playing C sharp, B, G sharp. So still from the pentatonic. Okay. And then walking line. And then the riff. And then that to A. Okay, so he goes up to the G natural there. That's the seventh. Okay, so, so that's quite a nice note to use for the walking line. Back to E. And then we've got the walking line. And then that triplet there, okay? So if you want to use triplets in your own lines, then just pick notes from the pentatonic. You can do it backwards, forward, okay? Okay, you can use any of those notes and those triplets work. So we're calling it a triplet because it's um, three notes over two. So kind of three eighth notes in the space of two eighth notes. But it kind of fits nicely with the shuffle groove. One, two, three, one, two, three, okay? And just use that same turnaround each time. Okay, and we look on the third chorus, 
We've got a really nice, really starts to kind of open up into these walking lines. And then we're up the octave here. So remember the pentatonic again? Okay, so you're just using those notes there. So, if we want to walk down, okay, we're walking down to A and we're just using the notes from the A scale, the A major scale. Okay, so walking down E, A, and then when we go back to E, if we're going upwards, we can just use the three frets below the target note. So we're going from A to E, we can just use those three frets there. C sharp, D, D sharp, E, okay? So you can always use that when you're kind of walking up, um, just use the three frets below the target note. So that's a really good walking device. So from the beginning of that chorus, and then you can start to make the line busier. You can put these kind of eighth notes in. And then here, okay? That's that same riff again, and then down to A. And then we've got the same chromatic walking line. And then the same sort of idea here. And then B. That's a nice walking line. Going to the third. And then A. And then there's a nice triplet. So instead of walking up to E, playing that triplet there, C sharp, E, F sharp, and then E. And then the same turnaround. Okay, so from that chorus, you can really take away these interesting walking lines. Remember the chromatic line walking up, and then just the major scale walking down. You just do the major scale from the target note, okay, and that always works. Okay, then we move on to the fourth chorus. So we've got these lines here. That's really high. So that's just that riff in A, in A again, same riff, but up here. With those slides, obviously, make it sound really good. Okay, so that's the same here that you played in the last chorus. Okay, and then back down to A. Up to E. Same riff. And then you've got this walking line. Okay, so Duck Dunn uses the same sort of devices over and over again, but he just puts them into different octaves. So that's really effective from that fourth chorus. Just to go right there, up there on the bass. Okay, and then come back down again. So what you're trying to do is build up um, shape in your bass line. So you can kind of think, for example, um, try to travel up the bass all the way up over a whole chorus and then come back down again in the next chorus. Just kind of give some overall shape and try and tie into what's happening. So um, if a, a solo is getting really exciting, then just put some more notes in, maybe get a bit busier and then play a little bit higher as well. Um, so what I usually do with a blues tune is I kind of keep it nice and establish the groove underneath the verse if there's vocals and then start to kind of let rip a bit um, with the solos. So you just don't want to be meandering over the bass for the whole song. Uh, it just gets a bit random. You still want to be pinning the song down. Now the last chorus that I've written down, chorus five, and by the way, this doesn't run exactly to the song. I've just kind of pulled out the interesting choruses. Um, so chorus five, there's an excellent walking line here. Okay, so that's all. He kind of stays in E there. Or that could be the third of A, so. And notice you've got a lot of repeated notes there, double up of the notes. And then we've got the riff. And he puts that kind of shuffling. Okay, so I'll just play the whole chorus now and listen to how it starts really high and then by the end of the chorus you're right down the bottom of the bass. So you've kind of gone from this F sharp right down to an open E. 
So that's really effective. So that's chorus, this is chorus five. right down the bottom of the bass. Now the last device I'm going to show you that Duck Dunn sometimes plays is a pedal note. Now he plays this in the first four bars um, of the sequence, so he just plays an E. A pedal note is when you play one note, just plays an E, it doesn't go through the quick change. You can do any rhythm you want, so I do something like this. down to the A. Now that's really effective for building up tension. So you can, the, it's a really good place to put it in the first four bars of the sequence. So try that as well. Well, I hope this has given you a few techniques that you can go away and use in your own blues bass lines. Now, by far the best way to learn how to play exciting, heart-hitting bass lines is to listen to what the greats are doing on these iconic tracks and take these devices away. I mean, it's a great idea to transcribe the whole bass line if you want, but don't just do that and play it through. Look at what they're doing, look at the devices and work out how you can use that in your own bass lines. Remember to pick up the free PDF by clicking the link below this video and also subscribe to my channel by pressing the red subscribe button. Now if you're really serious about becoming a confident blues player and you want to play at blues jam nights and in blues bands then head over to my website gbshed.com and you'll find out more information about how you can get help. And also don't forget to look in the description, I've got loads of links there with more blues resources and lots of other lessons. This is Greg from Greg Space Shed, hope to see you very soon in the next video.